morning 11th of the 11th of course so we'll be marking that this morning tom's in gretton for us at the war memorial there speaking to people from the royal british legion hearing some of the stories behind those names yeah i am and i'm especially happy because um the person who's organized this morning for me david miller who organizes the poppy appeal in gretton um brought his entire garden furniture set with him in case we get a bit tired and want to have a sit down beside the war memorial in the village <laughs> Yeah, and welcome to the Village Green, Annabelle. We're across the road from the Church of St. James the Great, and we're at the site of the village's war memorial. It's a beautiful semicircle of stone with an obelisk planted in the middle of it, and on plaques that are kind of faded, a kind of pale turquoise green by the years, um, are listed the names of all the men of Gretton who went off to the front in the Second World, in the First World War. Sorry, 72 of them, 35 of whom would not return. Um, their names are picked out in gold. Over my right shoulder, we can see a huge cascade of poppies, 2,700 knitted poppies tumbling down the side of the triangular village green in the, the village of Gretton. Uh, the whole thing, the knitted poppies uh, for the centenary of the poppy appeal, was arranged by Fiona Chapman. Good morning. Good morning. Um, how and why did you get involved? Um, so, it actually, it was a social media thing. I saw a poppy display from in Cornwall that came out of a church, and I thought how beautiful it was. And it was just as we were going into lockdown. So I thought, what a lovely idea to give somebody something to do over lockdown, to give us something to focus on so because we couldn't go out. So we set up a social media Facebook page um, to get people involved. We put some posters up around the village for people that went on social media and people just got knitting. So it was lovely. Smoke pouring off your needles? Uh, not mine to start with, actually. Um, I didn't, I, my plan had been to learn to crochet as a, as a skill from it. Tried a couple of times and failed miserably. Um, other people were then starting to drop poppies at my door. So I thought, hmm best to get started so I then started knitting them instead. Um, who knitted the most do you know? Uh, so I think the most was a, uh, a gentleman called Paul Branner and actually if you look at this display behind me all of the leaves he knitted individually to attach to the poppies afterwards. Wow this is on the, the, the display that's on the mature tree that we're standing underneath yes. uh, on the village screen. Why did you want to do it? Why did it matter to you? Um, it mattered to me because um, I think we do need to remember. Um, it was 100 years. Um, and so I just thought it'd be a lovely way of a, a per not a permanent, but a recurring memorial that we'd be able to put up in the village to um, remember people by. Because you want to keep this and use it in subsequent years. Yes. So the idea is... Where are you going to keep it? It's so um, it rolls up quite neatly, actually. Oh, okay. They each, each of the drops rolls. Um, so they're going to be dried and stored in my loft over winter to come out again next October. Okay, so um, so it will get a second and, well, hopefully lots of uses. Yes, yes. Um, will you build on it? Are you going to add um, to it? I hadn't planned to, but now it's up. Um, other people have got other ideas. Um, I'm going to go back out to the group and see if anybody else does want to keep knitting. Unfortunately, I think I've become a bit addicted, so I'm going to carry on knitting some poppies over the winter. <laughs> just throughout, just constantly, all the time. And... Gretton has quite a strong community feel, doesn't it? And I think over the past 18 months, we felt quite disconnected from one another at times. So as well as the vital role that the Poppy Appeal plays in helping people to remember on the 11th of November, I suppose there's also a, an opportunity to bring people back together again in the present day. 
Yes, and that, that was part of it. It was part about people keeping people connected over time when we couldn't get out. Um, and it's been we've been really lucky, actually, because we've got a village shop that got set up over lockdown, a little yeah. pop-in shop. And so they were a collection point for us. So I'd go down to the shop and find poppies that had been delivered. So I don't know everybody who gave me poppies because they just arrived at my door or at the shop. So I know some people, but not everybody who knitted. So Well, this is an opportunity to say thank you it to was everybody, a, a whether you knitted thank one you. or hundreds. Um, yeah, absolutely, a massive thank you, because it was a real group effort. Um, well done. Um, two brothers are on the War Memorial here in Gretton. Albert Coleman, killed in action in France on the 14th of March 1915 at the age of 19. And his brother Arthur died one month and one day after the armistice on December the 12th, 1918. Arthur made it home, uh, then passed away. He's buried in the churchyard across the road from where I'm standing. So two brothers from the same family amongst those who lost their lives during the Great War. Will be... So let's have a chat with someone who served in the Falklands, spent 22 years in the Royal Marines and now volunteers for the Poppy Appeal in the village of Gretton. That's Nigel Barrett. Good morning. Good morning. Um, your service, first of all, um, your time in the Marines, um, you spent a lot of time in Northern Ireland, in, in the Falklands as well, and particularly in the Falklands, uh, the Marines in, endured more than their fair share of losses. Yes, we certainly did. Um, yeah, being on HMS Fearless at the time, um, we were in the thick of the action uh, most of the time. Um, and you lost friends? Yeah, we lost Foxtrot for uh, one of our landing craft, um, and, and tragically the whole crew were killed. What happened? Um, basically, they were dropping off the troops, and um, one of the Argentinian planes came in and hit the rear uh, deck where the, the crew were all standing and working. Um. Clearly you were there with a job to do, and so I suppose you didn't really have the opportunity to dwell on it very much at the time, but I'm sure you must have had times since when, when you've thought about it, and I wonder what mark that leaves on you as a human being. Yeah, certainly when, um, when we heard the news that Fox Lot 4 had, had been, been hit, um, and a couple of my, well, so there were friends of mine on board there, it's, it's a very numb feeling, but the important thing was we had a job to do, and losing our friends just made us more determined to make the outcome what we wanted. Um, 22 years in, in the Royal Marines, I imagine it's sort of like, you're like a stick of rock, it runs right through you. Yes, 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 yeah. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed my career um, and I, I'm trying now to put back in to uh, my life things that I've learnt and I, and I run a cadet force as well. Um, you do, don't you? It's a local school. Yes. Um, yeah. Whereabouts? Yeah, the Brook Western Trust at Corby Business Academy. We have about 70 cadets at the moment, uh, and, and it's, it's brilliant. Um, and I suppose the opportunity to pass on the, the discipline and the ethos that you were given by, by your service um, is something that young people are receptive to? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, to see their growth over the three or four years that we have them as cadets is amazing. Um, you know, young people who at year one are a cadet being told what to do, at year three they're telling people what to do, mm. um, and taking charge and nurturing the young people. And confidence, but in, in, in a kind of in an inner resolve sense as opposed to the kind of the external arrogance that young people can sometimes be accused of having. Yes, yeah. There, there's, there's nobody that I know in our cadet force who's arrogant. They are they're doing it because they, they want to bring people on, they want people to learn, they want to pass on what they've learned. Mm. Um, now Remembrance Day is important to all of us, but for people like myself, where I'm kind of one step removed from the military, my granddad fought in Burma in the Second World War, but I don't have a family history in the armed forces, um, it feels slightly remote. What does uh, the 11th of November mean to you? It's a time to think about all the people that, that have died um, in support of our country. Uh, people probably don't, well, people, we take it for granted that servicemen will die um, for the job in hand. And it's, it's our time to think about it, to support the British Legion, uh, make a donation, and they support people maybe who slip through the gaps in, in the support in the country. And the British Legion is something that, that you give your time to support, particularly the poppy appeal around Gretton. So what do you do? Yeah, this, this is my first year of being a collector. Um, and I've seen, I've been in Gretton now for 30 odd years. I've seen how, how, how the poppy appeal is supported so well. And when the opportunity came for me to support it, I said, well, yeah, great. Yeah, please let me. And, uh, and well, what a year in which to start on the centenary. Yes, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And we've got this fantastic poppy display all around the, uh, the village green. An amazing amount of work. Absolutely. Um, it feels like the community really unites behind this kind of thing, which particularly after the 18 months that we've had is, 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 is a proud moment. Yes, the, the, the whole of Gretton, throughout the whole of COVID, etc., uh, has been brilliant. The village shop reopened, um, and, and people sh shopping for each other, helping each other out, very friendly. Everyone says hello. Um, 
congratulations for what you're doing now and thank you for your service um, right. in the Falklands and elsewhere. It's good to chat to you, Nigel. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nigel Barrett. And um, Nigel talked about the importance of individual stories, Annabelle. Just to bring you another one that's listed on the War Memorial here in Gretton. Charles Templer of the 1st Battalion, Northamptonshire Regiment, was killed in action on the 10th of July, 1917, aged just 19 years. He was the son of William and Sarah. Charles was one of those who was never found. Hence, his name appears on the Newport Memorial in France. From the Sport and Social Club, it's Chairman Spencer Nichols. Good morning. You had a race night, didn't you? And raced thousands. How did it go? It went really, really well. Um, Dave came to us and was looking for some type of event to do. And we thought about a disco and about a few other things. And then it was kind of, how do you get a 1920s theme that people are going to come along, have a really good time and raise some money? Um, and in the end, we decided on a, a race night. Put the TVs to black and white. Um, and yeah, what a night. Um, what was your outfit? My outfit, uh, well, we did Peaky Blinders, so I had a, a, a flat cap, white shirt, waistcoat. Um, yeah, I looked quite good, but there were some, especially the ladies, the ladies made a real effort, and we had some great costumes that night. In the spirit of Peaky Blinders, I assume you also beat people up at the end of the night, Spencer. <laughs> Only when it was closing time. Okay, fine. Well done. Very restrained. How much did you raise? We raised, in total, just shy of £3,000. Um, I say just shy, it was like penny short of £3,000. So with, with the, the, the takings that we donated from the night, the raffle, the poppy sales, all the work that Dave and his team had done beforehand, yeah, what a brilliant night. Um, which, for a relatively small community, is really something. Was it packed? Absolutely packed. Um, we, we got to the stage where we had to say to Dave, you need to stop selling tickets because... Uh, no, we're not selling tickets, but allocating tables for the night because we got to 100 people and we knew other people would, would come along. And at times it was standing room only. So mm. a, a brilliant. It was brilliant to be able to raise money, but also see the community have a, a great time as well. Yeah, bring people together yes. is, is, is vital at the moment, isn't it? To be able to start doing that again. Yeah, after, after the year, 18 months we've had to see people mix, have fun, um, get dressed up. Mm. Really good. Do you have a family history in the military space? Grandfather served in the uh, RAF and was shot down and, and ended up in a prisoner of war camp. So I guess I do, not me generally, but... That counts my, as my, a family uh, history. My, my, uh, my, grand, my granddad served, I was very proud of that. Remembrance Day to me is just, we have such a busy time, just taking, not just the Sunday and taking two minutes or the two minutes today, it's just thinking about it. Weren't you, Poppy? I didn't serve, but the people that did, did serve, I think it's very important that we remember them and, and think about what life could be if other people hadn't made a sacrifice. And I think also for a community like Gretton, which is close-knit and where people stay here for several generations, it provides more of a link in a way. Well, we speak to somebody at 10 to 9 who has ancestors on the war memorial just over our left shoulder. Um, it makes it more real. It definitely does. Even just looking at the names there, quite a few of the streets here are named after people that have either served or perished in the war. So um, Gretton has a, has a tie to these people. And, you know, this is the almost the, the focal point of, of the village and how beautiful it looks. Absolutely. Um, now that you've done it once and it was a great success, is this going to become an annual thing? So I said to Dave the week before, you do know this is going to be an annual thing. And he was a bit nervous in case... It didn't go as well. And the next morning he texted me and said, right, it's 40 years of the Falklands next year, so we're on. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's now an annual event. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're not going <laughs> to no. get a say, are you? And, uh, well, I guess with the fact that you have Nigel Barrett, a Marine who served in the Falklands, who we spoke to earlier on, he lives in the village, it would uh, feel like an apt anniversary to mark. Yeah, it would, it would tie, in, tie in nicely. And it, it's also one of those walls that people can forget. So... Mm. Um, you know, it, it would be nice to have, again, raise, raise some good money, have a really good time and uh, then take the, the seriousness of, of remembering. Absolutely. Um, it's good to see you. Congratulations for what you did. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Spencer Nichols. This one's quite interesting because it's quite easy to think, particularly with the First and Second World Wars, about um, the young men who, who went off to fight and who died. Um, but someone kind of at the other end of the age spectrum was John Craxford of the 39th Field Ambulance Unit. He died of wounds on the 11th of March, 1917, while serving in Mesopotamia, what's now Iraq. Uh, he was 44 years old, and he's commemorated on the war memorial in Basra.
Private James Thursden, who was in the Army Medical Corps. He was killed in action on the 24th of July 1916 and is buried at Bernafay Wood Cemetery in the Somme. Uh, his descendants remain in Gretton to this day. Shirley Thursden organises the Remembrance Sunday services here in Gretton and at the US Air Force Base Memorial uh, down the road at Spanho. And she's here. Good morning. You, I mean, you look at the War Memorial here in Gretton and these aren't just names on a plaque. These are, these are people. These are from your family. Yes. They are, yes, the Thursdens and the Colmans. Um, they both served in the First World War and the Thursden, that's on my husband's side, great uncle to my late uncle, uh, um, husband, and then the Colmans are on my side. And when you were growing up in, in the 30s and 40s, were these people who were spoken about around you? Yeah, more or less, yes, yeah, yeah. And how was their sacrifice, did you understand their sacrifice at the time or was it something that you only really learnt about later Later on? in life, yes, definitely, yes, and that. But I knew that, um, as I say, uh, my late husband told me about his uncle in the First World War and his uh, grave is up in our churchyard. Um, now, you have volunteered for the Royal British Legion for an absolutely astonishing period of time how many years 60 years 60 years it's been part of my life tom and i've enjoyed what i've done and when i think back of all those what gave their lives for us in the two world wars i hope we continue to have a remembrance sunday for many many years to come do you remember what led you to first start volunteering, how it happened? Well, I belong to the women's section of the Royal British Legion. Um, I was vice chairman and then I moved up and I was um, chairman. And sadly, um, we closed down a few years ago. I could not get the younger generation to come along. But um, I've always been very, very interested in the Royal British Legion and I hope to continue a little bit longer. Well, you were presented, we spoke earlier to Spencer from the Sports and Social Club, at their race night recently, you were presented uh, with a special badge to reflect your years of yes. volunteering. You're wearing it this morning, so it's a, yeah. it's a pin badge with a poppy on it, and then um, ribbons hung from it, kind of carrying on down your body, and they go down quite a long way, because mm. you've got everywhere from 35 up to 60 years. That's right, yes. Um, do you feel, how do you feel about, about that period of, of time? Because I, I look at it and I, I feel gratitude and pride, I would say. Well, that's exactly how I feel. I do, Tom, because, you know, to think you're trying to help all those who gave their lives for us, and they did, mm. didn't they? And, um, you know, you've got to be grateful that you can do this sort of thing. I mean, you said you hope that there will always be a Remembrance Sunday. Of course, we talk a lot at this time of year about the First and Second World Wars, don't we? But you mm. know, service men and women have lost their lives in much more recent mm. conflicts. The Falklands, Iraq, Afghanistan. Mm. For for as long as people are fighting each other, there will be a need to remember those yes, who, who don't definitely. survive. definitely. They will. Um, the services this Sunday, um, can you tell me a little bit about them? Well, we have a service at Spano Aerodrome, which is just outside Harringworth. And that starts at 11 o'clock, which is open air. And I've done that since David, who's with us this morning, his grandfather sadly passed away and the parish council contacted me, would I carry it on? And I've done it ever since. Mm. And every year we get a real good attendance and we have the carriers um, come from the um, uh, American when the Americans were stationed at Spano yeah. and it just puts the icing on the cake and I have two members from Gretton Silver Band who play the Rivali and the Last Post. Um, well, look, I hope that... Um, and then in the afternoon yeah. we have the service here on the War Memorial at three. My husband served in the Second World War and he was in the Royal Engineers. Um, Shirley, thank you. Thank Thanks you, to Tom. Him and to everyone else, it's good to see you. Shirley Thurston. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them or the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, 
We will remember them. <laughs>
I'm lying in a battlefield. I feel I'm going to die. The battle rages all around. Please, God, just tell me why. The pain is getting really bad. I'm feeling very weak. I hope my dad is proud of me. I want to fall asleep. My dad had said the time had come for me to go to war. He shook my hand. My mum just wept. I slowly closed the door. The sergeant said, this war is won. You'll have an easy time. Just point your gun and heads down low. I promise you'll be fine. soldiers lying everywhere, their bodies racked with pain. They'll never see their mums again. I think this war's insane. I have to ask my precious God, why does man have to kill? If we could live in harmony, the world would be so still. Poppies look like drops of blood. They're growing all around. Dead bodies lay where they just fell. Gunshots, the only sound. The cannons are all silent now. Our soldiers were so brave. We stand in silence as we place our poppies on a grave. I don't believe that God would want this world to be at war. Dear Lord, I pray with all my heart, we'll live in peace once more. <laughs>